Okay, so when we talk about Pythagoras theorem, we are always talking about a right angle triangle. So I'm just going to make a note first. Okay, so when you see the word Pythagoras theorem, remember you are dealing with a right angle triangle. Okay, and what's the purpose of Pythagoras theorem? What do we use it for? Okay, we are going to use a Pythagoras theorem to find the sides of the triangle, to find how long is the sides of the triangle. Okay, so we are going to use it to calculate how long it's the side of the triangle. Okay, all right. So again, let's look at a right angle triangle. So I'm just going to draw some example over here for everyone. Okay, so that's my right angle triangle. And since it's a right angle, I have a 90 degree over here. All right. So when we talk about a right angle triangle, we have three sides. And usually in Pythagoras theorem, we will show it as a, B, and C, where the length of C over here, it's the longest side of a right angle triangle. And we have a name for it. We call this the hypotenuse. We call this the hypotenuse. Okay, the hypotenuse is the longest side. Huh? All right, it's the longest side of a right angle triangle. Now, for students that may, maybe this is your first time looking at this hypotenuse, maybe some ways that is easy for you to remember where is it is by looking at the angle. Take a look at the 90 degree angle. Can you see this pointy part over here? So this pointy part is like pointing at this side, right? So that side which the 90 degree angle is pointing, it's the hypotenuse, okay? Now, um, in Pythagoras theorem, um, there's a formula that we will be using. So I will tell you the formula now. So Pythagoras, Pythagoras theorem says that the longest side, which we will be written as c square, is going to be equals to a square plus b square. So that is the formula of Pythagoras theorem. All right. But of course, um, I would like to show you something that you know. Like for those of you, if you if you are if you are if you know this formula, that's great. If you know how to use it, that's great. But I also would like to you know, share how would you convince people that you know this formula is true. Now let's take a look in depth on this formula a bit before I show you on the calculation parts. C square is equals to a square plus b square. When we take a look at you know either one of them. This is basically telling me it's a shape, right? C square. C square is basically a square that is made out of this length over here, all right? So let me give you a visual example so you can see what I'm talking about. So I have a right angle triangle here, which I'm going to put, I'm going to erase this. I'm going to put here for everyone reference. Right, so over here you can see I have my right angle triangle which is in orange, and I will label my A, B, and C. And C is my hypotenuse. So I have my C square over here, which is a square, this square, all right, which is made out of this line. So I'm gonna put my C square over there, all right. So that's my C square, okay. And I will be doing the same for my a square and b square, which I have prepared over here. Okay, I have prepared my a square and b square. So my a square will be will be this one. Okay, that's my a square. And over here, that's my b square. Okay, right. So let's understand the formula again in terms of this context over here. So what Pythagoras theorem is saying that these two square, which is a square and b square, can fit 
inside this C square over here. Now I'm gonna show you how to how does this work out, okay? All right, but before that, let me rearrange this uh, shape in a way that um, I can show you this easier. So give me a moment, nah. So I'm gonna put it like this. So this guy is gonna be over here. Right, it's just the same thing. I am just rotating it for uh, my convenience and also for yours, okay? Right. So again, let's look at this again. So this is my right angle triangle. I have my A square, which is represented in green color. I have my B square and I have my C square over here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit these two inside here to prove that this formula is indeed true, right? But of course, I'll, I'm going to cut out this and I'm going to rearrange it like so. So this guy, I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to put it here. Okay, so this guy, I'm going to cut it out and put it here. And this one is going to be here. And the last one is going to be here. Now you might notice one thing over here. Like after I put in my A square, which is the green square, you will see hmm, there is one more spot in the middle. And coincidentally, this shape fits in perfectly over here. Alright? Fits in just nice and just right. Okay, so there you have it. So what I have shown you right now, it's A square plus B square is equals to C square over here. So that's how we prove Pythagoras theorem. Alright? So moving on, let's try to apply Pythagoras theorem. It's gonna it's gonna be very simple. Okay, so let's use an example. Alright, let's just say I know this A B C. Now let's just say this is four, this is three, and this is x. Alright. Okay, so that's our function of Pythagoras theorem to find the sides of a triangle when you are given two sides. Okay. So to work this out is very simple. All we have to do is to apply the formula. So c squared right now is going to be x squared, right? That's our unknown. So I'm going to write it here. So that's going to be our x squared. is equals to a squared, which is going to be 4 squared, plus 3 squared. Okay? So we can work on with our algebra here. So this is going to be x squared is equals to 16 plus 9 x square is equals to 25 and x is going to equals to a square root of 25 and that's going to give you 5 over here all right so the length of this hypotenuse it's 5 units okay now for some of you um, that you might notice when you square root um, you might have a habit to do to put plus minus correct okay because Positive 5 and negative 5 square it will give you 25, right? But since we are dealing with shape, we will be ignoring the negative over here because there is no such thing as negative length, right? So all our answer by default will be positive, okay? Alright, so that's how we work on Pythagoras theorem. Now let me go through some um, more examples for your reference. Okay, let's try to look at this question over here. So I'm going to draw my right angle triangle. Okay, let's see this question. So it's going to look something like this. All right. Let's make this obvious a bit. All right. Okay, let's look great. So my 90 degree is over here. So which means my hypotenuse is over here. That's my longer side. So based on the question, I have 15 over here, I have 9 over here, and this is my A. So the question asks us to work out. So very simple, we can just use the formula. 
So since this is the hypotenuse, that is going to be 15 square, and that's equals to a square plus 9 square. All right, we can work this out with our calculator very quickly. 15 square will give you 2 to 5, and this is going to equal to a square plus 81. We can rearrange the equation. 2 to 5 minus 81, 2 to 5 minus 81 is equals to a square, and that should give you 144. And when you square root 144, that should give you trough. All right, that should give you trough over here. Okay, now last example for Pythagoras theorem. Let's look at this question very quickly. Okay, so I have a right angle triangle that looks something like this. And my 90 is over here, so which means my hypotenuse is on this side. So it is written there as 6 cm, that's 3.5, and this one is my unknown. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply my formula. So over here, this is going to be 6 square is equals to 3.5 square plus a square. This is going to be 36, and this one is going to be 12 point something. Okay, 12.25, and that's going to be a square over here, right? We can rearrange our equation, 36 minus 12.25, and that's equal to a square, and we will get 23.75, and that's equal to a square. And we can then square root the answer. And we will be basically getting a third, an irrational number, all right? So this is actually an irrational number. So when you have an irrational number, all you need to do is to round that off to three decimal, eh, three significant figure, okay? So my final answer is gonna be 4.87, all right? Remember, if you get an answer in third, right, in irrational number, and that's your final answer, you can always round it off to three significant figure. That's Pythagoras theorem, okay?